What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical map of Utah for Faces Favorite Nerd and today we are looking at the Mezco Deadpool with the X-Force garb. This is on loan to me from Baltimore Brand and a good friend of mine. It is a Mezco so it does come with a ton of accessories. Let's not waste too much more time. Plus I just ruined the intro like 30 times. What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical map of Utah's Favorite Nerd. What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical map of our face. What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical for our maps. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical map of Utah's face. For f What's up everybody? It's your favorite topographical <laughs> So it comes with the display base. They always do a great job. We have the Deadpool symbol at the bottom with the X-Force deco. And then we have the armature. It swivels at the bottom. Hinge, 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 swivel, and then clamp. We have a ton of artillery. We have this bazooka. It looks very menacing. It's black, dry brushed silver, and then dry brushed like a medium dry, so to speak, of red over top of it. Plus you have the Deadpool symbol on there. It looks phenomenal. Detailings wise, it is dead on the money. Very beautiful piece. It's got some fingerprints in there from the people that painted it. So that's less than favorable. But other than that, it looks good. And then it says Deadpool's gun on the side of it. Very nice. And then he also has this grenade launcher. Or maybe it's not a grenade launcher. What am I? Commando. But it says bye bye on one side painted <clears throat> and on the other side. That's a silver with a wash. We have dry brushing silver on the front and we have some silver accents on the back and then we have the happy face there on the scope. And unfortunately, it, there is some loose components like this stock is able to like flip up and then come back down, but it is a bit loose. And then this does open up, but that's like the tension here is a bit loose as well. So it is a little bit flimsy. This could be just his, it could be an individual results will vary, but it's worth noting. The reason why this does this is because it comes with six pieces of ammunition for it, all with silver paint. The paint isn't done evenly, it's silver paint applied, like it's not in a straight circle around, like it kind of dips and dabs, so to speak. But you can load it in, you can load all of them in, and then you can put it back, which is a nice touch, maybe a little unnecessary, but it is a nice touch. To coincide with that, he also comes with smaller rounds for it, same sort of detailings, and they will fit inside as well, but they do obviously, you know, fall deep inside the chamber, so to speak, but you can just drop them right back out. And he comes with six of those as well. And then he comes with two Uzi type weapons. They do have the safety painted on there, which is pretty funny. And then they do have a uh, psych written on there with an arrow to it. So that's pretty cool as well. And then chimichanga down the magazine. The magazine is removable. It has uh, bullet casings inside of it. And then there's silver, I mean, gold painted on there. So that looks good. Then we have silver painted on the actual weapon itself. And then we have some dry brushing on the magazine or clip. I, I can never keep it straight clips or magazines. I, I'm not much of a gun enthusiast. I think they look wicked and all. It's just not necessarily my thing. And then he comes with a handgun, like a Glock style weapon. Yeah, you know, I should just purposely say the wrong type of guns and just drive really, you know, gun nuts mad. But uh, this, I know, is a magazine. This is also removable. Dry brushed a bit on it itself. And then the ammunition is painted uh, gold and red and then that slides in and he also comes with then he comes with two extras for the uzi type weapons and one extra for the handgun and he also comes with this bad boy we've got some gray paint it looks like painted on purposefully and then some silver paint dry brush throughout with an outstanding sculpt he comes with four grenades that are all style painted you know with the deadpool face on them looks quite nice and then the pin and all that bit, the handle, look like they have a dry brush on them as well. Now he can hold these and they can also clip into his belt, obviously using this, this bit. And then lastly, he comes with the sword. We have the nice silver paint on there and then two tones of silver on the handle. Looks sharp, looks good. It can stow in his scabbard and he can hold it just fine. And speaking of holding, he can hold most of his firearms just fine. With one exception, this puppy, which tends to be the problem child for the whole set, honestly. He doesn't hold this one quite as well. It'll stay, but it's very loose. And speaking of hands, we have two trigger finger hands left and right, two fist hands left and right, two sword holding hands left and right, and then two additional hands, one that's kind of the hang loose bit, and then one that's a weapon supporting hand, or it can hold the grenade kind of with balance in this hand. And lastly, we have two different heads, and the reason why we're looking at these separate is because they're very much the same, and the one that he has on currently is very much different, but they are tremendous sculpts. Oh God, I love their sculpt work. I really do. 
I wish that they did more sculpt work and less soft goods, honestly, but I love their sculpt work. So it's all the wrinkles and such and the seams and the suit looks so natural. Looks fantastic. We have one eye huge and one eye small, typical Deadpool style, and then one sort of like just run of the mill Deadpool style. We have uh, some slight subtle shading on the grays. The red has a uh, gloss over top of it. Just extremely well done. All right, so let's talk about the figure. The head sculpt on this, once again, all the gray, black, and red is all done the same and done beautifully. And then we have the face, which is also done beautifully. It looks like to me that they painted it, washed it heavy, went over top of that and painted it the like upper tone of the flesh, like the flesh that's sitting on top of the damaged flesh, and then did a light wash on that and then painted the lips. And by golly, it looks fantastic as a result. We'll take the head off so we can look at the articulation and we'll go ahead and swap heads while we're here so you can get a different view of him while we continue on. Uh, uh, hopefully you saw that double ball peg from the head into the neck and then the neck feels like it's on a single hinge possibly hard to tell it's either a ball peg that's really tight or a hinge all right and now we have to start talking about some of the stuff that bothers me which is first and foremost this floating belt here now I praise the plastic and sculpt on everything here and I tend to say it loosely. So if you hear me say it, I'm talking about everything but this belt and these straps that go across. This is the problem. These straps, like Marvel Legends have figured out how to do it. They like sculpt them in and they dig out the collarbone section and it sits naturally. But this has that floating look, which makes it look weightless and lifeless. And as a result, look unrealistic and unbelievable. Really destroys the, um, suspension of disbelief now it's possible you may be able to take this and put hot water and soak but i don't even know how you would get it off you probably could Ugh, i don't know it wouldn't be easy anyway i guess pop the head off and raise the arms i don't know it doesn't matter it's not mine i don't have to worry about it so the the scabbard here is painted the gray is painted it's dry brushed with silver and then it has some silver accents the silver looks to be all painted the red is painted the black is painted and then the belt symbol is painted as well so there's no i mean it's they care. This is just a weird circumstance. So the shoulder, it feels like to me that it's a disc hinge connected to a ball peg inside of the chest. It's a little limited on a butterfly, but I'm guessing that's because of the ball peg and the cut around. They could probably let a lot of that go because the soft goods cover up, you know, the seam and the joint. They could probably cut some of this chest out to allow the arms to move a little bit forward, but they didn't. The arms can get all the way up to here, which is a great range of motion, especially given the soft goods. So that's fantastic. We don't always see you know, the, the greatest range of motion when it comes to Mezco. I mean, they, they work fairly well, but we don't always see range this good. And then up, I don't wanna press it too far. Even up, you can get all the way up, which is nice. That's really well executed. And then we have the bicep swivel. You get a fair bit out of that double jointed elbow that works well and then you have the wrist swivel and hinge in out so that you can turn it and get up down now the gauntlets are all sculpted and beautifully painted with two tones of silver and a wash there's two types of fabric here one is that stretchy superhero fabric they always use and then one is that patent leather that they use so or like that faux leather the stitching looks fine on the superhero suit it looks a little disproportionate on the leather same for the other side then we have a double ball peg, it feels like. I can't tell. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it's a double ball peg from the chest into the abdomen, and it feels like it might even be a double ball peg from the abdomen into the pelvis, but it probably is a single. Either way, you get the figure over to there, back to there, side to side, and a swivel. All works very nicely. Feels like T-jointed ball joints to me. You get the hips out to there, even with the soft goods, so that's nothing to turn your nose up at, is it? Uh, the suit does bunch up. That's one of the costs of doing business with soft goods. And forward, straight out, so no problems there. Thigh swivel, that looks good. Double jointed knee, not the prettiest because of the way that this suit, like this tighter superhero fabric sort of hits around those bulges and kind of accentuates it, but great range of motion. This is a bit of a problem. 
So I feel like this piece, this is probably a double ball peg down here, but it's, it's all connected, isn't it? No, it's not. It's just tight. So when you go and manipulate the figure, the shin guards end up moving the foot and ends up putting the figure off balance from time to time. Um, so you do get an additional swivel there and you can get it at just the ankle. I think it's a double ball peg. You get an ankle tilt up to there, down to there, and then a, a fairly limited rocker. It's there, but it's, it's not the greatest. Um, and especially when all the other articulation is pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. And there he is from the back. So pretty well done. Final thoughts wise, negatives, the chest straps to the belt really do throw this thing off visually. The soft goods do tend to bunch around the joints, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. And the stitching seems quite large, but that's really it. This one works pretty well. Oh, I'll also say there's some issues with this, but we've kind of talked about that a fair bit. Those are going to be the big things that stand out to you about this guy that kind of keep it from being a, you know, a kind of a knockout figure. It's pretty good across the board. We'll talk about that here in a second, but it does have those few issues which could have made it perfect or prevent it from being perfect. Positives wise though, I can tell you the accessories are drop dead gorgeous and unbelievably awesome. They all work extremely well with the exception of that grenade launcher. They all add a ton of character and a ton of display options. Every piece of plastic on this thing is sculpted to the nines and painted to the nines. The engineering articulation wise is 100% there with a few exceptions. Feet. But even with the feet being a shortcoming, they give you a display base to make up for it. The soft goods, while not my favorite in this scale and sometimes work better than others, I will say functionally work fine for the most part. And he has a strong presence. So if you're a Deadpool fan, a 112 fan, a Mezco fan, this is a recommend for me. It is a previews exclusive, I believe. I'm not sure how difficult that is to find. I know Mezco's aftermarket can get a little crazy, but if you're into this and you don't have it, I wish you the best of luck in tracking one down. It's a pretty great figure with a few weird things for me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.